Hello and welcome to the Rioho Wellness Podcast. This is Margit Jefferson and I am here with Andre Gospodarczyk, the founder of Rioho. The vision behind Rioho Wellness is to create a tipping point in wellness worldwide. And this podcast will contribute towards that. In each episode, we explore different health issues that present as case studies in Andre's practice. They range from everyday common health problems through to extremely serious health issues and illnesses. We explore body parts and how they respond to nutrition and environment. And we work on inspiring people to change their life for good through an everyday wellness focus. Rioho is a wellness modality that is unique because it focuses on healing and wellness through basic food and exercises that maneuver the body back to a state of balanced health. People literally jump out of their skin with energy and vitality when they follow Rioho. And it's an incredible turnaround for many who have had low energy for years through to people who have had complex health issues that don't seem to budge. The podcast is an interview format and ranges from 20 to 60 minutes. And if you'd like more of an introduction on Andre, please see the three minute introduction in the first podcast on the homepage. And at the end, I'll be here to give you a little bit more information. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. I'm sure you know someone who suffers from headaches. You might even be a sufferer yourself. I'm sure you've seen people who have had a headache that is so bad, you can literally see their head is hurting. Their eyes are red, they're a little bit pale, they are very flat, and they're just trying to hold it together until they have, at long last, the opportunity to get some rest and get over that very painful episode. They're just waiting for the end of the day when they can crawl into bed, hopefully fall asleep. It's absolutely horrible for them to have this pounding head all day, waiting it out to get to the other side and resume their normal life. This episode is designed for people who have extreme headaches like that through to people who have milder forms of headache on a regular basis. We've also looked at children and pregnant women, and we hope you enjoy it. There's many different problems people can have in their heads with headaches. The the main thing is that it's a serious problem, even though it's common. I mean, literally your brain hurts, and and that's, that's a bad thing where the nerves... Uh, having pressure put on them in your head by having too much fluid in there pressing on them or something else creating that pressure. It's usually created by a lack of blood flow to the brain, but it can also be that there's too much acid in there. That comes from certain sorts of foods. Now, there's there's different kinds of headaches. There's stress headaches, what they call tension headaches, and they mean the muscles on in the head are too tight. There's headaches that you have at the front of the head. There's headaches that you have inside the head. And there's headaches that start at the eyes, go through to the back of the head. Some are more on one side than on the other. Now, they're all varying in intensity. I mean, the, the most common one is that you wake up with a headache from having too much alcohol and that means that there's too much acid in your head and over time the blood will get in there and take away the acid buildup that is causing the pressure that is creating the the headache and that's that's normal and certain foods are going to help get rid of that very quickly if your blood is capable of dealing with the problem then it heals rather rapidly in in just a couple of hours or maybe even just having a a little bit of a medicine like uh, something salty, bacon, whatever. Different people use different things, don't they? The other end of the spectrum is chronic migraines. Now, one, one young lady came to me many years ago with migraines that she had almost every single day debilitating migraines and they were horrendous in the intensity where it made her vomit and I asked her how she coped with that every day like that and she just said to me that she kept sane by thinking that every day that was the last one she was ever going to have and that that's how bad it was and I, I know that a lot of people have that level of intensity of migraine. So that that's the two extremes. Now, what causes those problems is, like I was saying earlier, some 
kind of pressure on the nerve in your head. There's not supposed to be that kind of pressure in there and it can be easily resolved by not having poor blood flow to the brain. In other words, lengthening the neck and taking the pressure off the back of the skull, not eating the foods that promote this sort of problem. It might sound simplistic, but the lady I mentioned with the migraines, we just discussed her dietary habits. And in her case, all we had to do was take away chocolate and a couple of other irritants out of her diet, and she was fine. It cleared up within a week. It was wonderful. Other people need a lot more than that. They might have all sorts of problems coming from the lower back where there's a misalignment and the head sits wrong creating a lot of tension in the neck and creating very poor blood flow to the head. Maybe it's allergy reactions. Different types of headaches are caused by different problems, as I said earlier, but all of them are some kind of acid response. So as long as the, the guts are good, as long as there's pressure in the lower body, then the upper body can relax, the shoulders can relax, and the blood can flow properly. Some of our regular listeners might know now that our general philosophy with Rioho is that the upper body is supported by the lower body, which seems pretty simplistic. It allows us as human beings to deal with the problem, the real cause of the problem, which is to create pressure in our lower body, create intense holding strong support in the lower body by tightening the belly functions and then the shoulders can relax the neck can relax and improving blood quality is going to allow your body to heal create slightly alkaline blood and then we can discover the sorts of foods that are causing these problems and slowly eliminate them so what i mean by that is get yourself healthy and well and then experiment it shouldn't be too hard to find the foods that you're sensitive to and have been maybe causing these problems another little guide is where if it's on the top left hand side of your head it's coming from a chemical if it's at the back of your head it's probably coming from some kind of food if it's at the front of your head it's very likely to be some sort of intestine problem. So there's a a little summary there for everyone to think about, Margaret. So Andre, you've talked about four or five different headache categories in that fantastic lead-in to this podcast. And what I would like to do is to examine each major category for our listeners who are suffering so that they can really understand what's going on. The first category I'd like to examine with you is the most severe form of headache that goes beyond a migraine where the sufferer feels the pain coming on and just knows that they are going to be locked in a cool, dark, quiet room for anywhere up to seven to ten days, maybe less, maybe more, while they just barely cope with the most excruciating, horrendous pain. That's the category that I'd like to start with so that our listeners who suffer this form of headache can understand what's going on. Yeah, so the 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 kind of severe headache and there's 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 even worse than that um, which they call cluster headache and the person just literally claws at their head because the the nerves are very sensitive in the head it's it's a horrible thing to have pressure on them. The migraine level of pain is is horrendous, of course. The pressure starts with sometimes just a a feeling behind the eyes, and there's an optic nerve that goes from the eyes, of course, to the back of the head and down into the neck, and so that gets affected as a, a feeling at first. The vision goes a little bit strange for some people, not all. They're a little bit different, the, the symptoms, but there, there's a, a, a general feeling of some something wrong with the eyes first and, and then we, we know we're in trouble. The migraines we find we need to deal with the whole spine going right down to the lower back. If we look at the spine as a seesaw, as a building maybe, and think about how the balancing of the head on top of that long series of vertebrae is quite a delicate juggling act and how it has to be quite stable to be relaxed. Any little imbalance from the lowest part of the back is going to create a big reaction in the other end. So if you're standing square on your feet and your forward, back, left, right balance is pretty good, then it's likely that it's going to be 
easy on the neck muscles. But if there is a bit of a lean to one side, or maybe forward or back or a combination, then there's going to be a lot of pressure on one side of the head. Now, the people that we find have got this sort of problem have on the back of their head more pressure on one side than the other. There's a series of plates that are actually your skull and the back of the head has two big plates and one has more pressure than the other when there's these sorts of dramas happening with migraines. And by going all the way down to the lower back, rebalancing the muscles in the back, getting the person to relax their neck and shoulders by creating stability in the spine, we tend to have very good results with these sorts of chronic problems. On the other hand, fixing the lower back and knowing that it's coming from there also means that it's probably related to some kind of hormonal problem. Our understanding is the seat of the lower back also relates to the structural integrity of the whole body. And it's where we treat hormonal problems from. So usually we find those two related, where if there's an imbalance in the lower back, there's usually some sort of hormonal difficulty. And so we see these patterns or cycles. And it does tend to happen a little bit as a, as a cycle. And it, it varies. It can be seasonal even, but it does tend to relate to some sort of hormonal difficulty. So it's quite a deep-rooted problem as are the symptoms obviously showing, you know, the intensity of the symptoms. So that's how we deal with that kind of difficulty by treating the whole body. So just staying on this particular type of headache, you're talking about the structure of the spine and the structure of the body. Is it evident in people's posture So if someone presents with a a very bad headache problem, whether it's a cluster headache or tension or migraine or whatever it is, is it pretty obvious in their posture to you? To me, yes, it is. I don't think most people would pick up on it, but I can see how they stand on one leg and turn the other foot out. I can see how they tend to always sit with one leg folded over the top of the other, crossing their legs. They lie with um, one leg over the other, that's their only comfortable position. They sit with their tailbone tucked under quite heavily and a rounded back. That doesn't have to be the case. The combinations of those is, is, is quite common to see with people. I mean, it looks to me like a problem. I don't think most people would see it as a problem though. But yeah, I can see it as people standing, sitting and feeling comfortable on in what I consider quite uncomfortable positions yeah that shows therefore going to a practitioner like a chiropractor or an osteopath or some of the other allied health professionals who are able to give relief to headache symptoms if the the body is fundamentally unstable that sort of treatment's not going to going to solve the entire problem then In some people, it it creates great relief and uh, there's a wonderful technique, though, that goes much deeper and does deal with how people hold themselves. There's a lovely thing called the Alexander Technique, which shows people how to walk with a balanced neck muscle function and it teaches them how to hold themselves up and they have great results with that. But you're quite right is that when we're looking at the lower back being unbalanced that way, when we're seeing that kind of distortion, that it's not enough just to straighten the spine up because it's not the spine causing the hormonal problem, it's the hormonal problem causing the spine difficulty. So we're only treating the symptom really, even if we do get great results, which is a lovely thing, but we need to go deeper because there's there's, there's deep issues there. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why people who are going to different practitioners getting some sort of symptomatic relief or great relief, but the headache returns, it's because there's a real cause to the problem, a very deep rooted cause that hasn't yet been unearthed or discovered for that individual even though people do find relief, it, it's nice to keep going and find out the real cause of these problems. And not everyone is the same. Uh, that's that's the thing. Uh, it's we're all unique in our not only in our makeup as individuals. Our talents are different. Our, our skills are different. It, but also our weaknesses are all different. Also, and but certain symptoms and certain problems relate to certain kinds of weaknesses. So we can look at those 
those symptoms and make assumptions, but it's it's not going to be accurate for the individual. So yes, we can treat the neck and the spine and get some good results, acupuncture, herbs, but it, it's much better to actually, as as the world is going now, we're, we're starting to look at personalized medical systems now, much more so which is the right thing, of course. The, the world is evolving medically. It's understanding that people need to be looked at as a unique set of circumstances. And you can generalize. We can say that migraines tend to have a, a hormonal basis, but how we deal with that in each individual is going to be a little bit different. The simple approach is to clean your diet up, be brave, be strong, do not use a normal approach to this problem of just painkillers and waiting it out. Be, be brave and try to get to the root of it by cleaning your diet up. Go very simple with, with your food, just vegetables or just grains or just beans and salads and find what works for you in calming everything down and then slowly rebuild and add animal products or not, add fruit or not, add different sorts of food, slowly rebuild over a period of time and see what works for you. Can you just explain a little bit more about those cluster headaches? Cluster headaches are not as common as migraines, um, but they're absolutely devastating. They're, they're people just suddenly, you know, they might not have anything for 10 years and then just suddenly it, it grips them and they fall down in agony, literally. And it's, it's absolutely devastating for people. It's where there's nerve pressure. Now, we relate that to an easier, less, I should say, less difficult problem and it's where there's a difficulty with the intestine it's another it's an intestinal problem if we look at the brain and see it as a, a unit where it, it it's a, a long curly mass and it, it evolves from the spine going down into the lower back and we see that as as connected to the long curly mass of the intestine with a, a tube going up the digestive system to the mouth. And the two work together. We, we know now the bacteria in our gut and the, the functioning of our intestine relates directly to the uh, functioning of the brain. So there's a direct connection for us in Rioja. There's always been a direct connection and it's a very simple, obvious connection for us. It's In fact, we treat the intestine to to make changes in the brain. It might seem ridiculous to, to some medical people, but for us it's a it's a very obvious approach. It, it's black and white for us. It's extremely obvious and very clear. So with the small intestine function, we get a little bit of blood pressure in there. We, we clean it out a little bit with some reasonable eating and people who get that sharp stabbing pain in the middle of their head, deep in the inner cortex of their brain, it, it, that, that resolves very quickly. And that's the beginnings of and very similar to cluster headaches. So we, we treat their small intestine for that and it's usually great results very quick. I'm sure sufferers don't think this or don't know this, but from what I've seen amongst the people I know who have cluster headaches and migraines, cluster headaches can be just as debilitating, if not even more debilitating than people who have very severe migraines met a few people with cluster headaches, rare, and they, they literally just fall down clutching their head and screaming in agony. Yep. And they don't have them for 10 years and then they have them every day for weeks and then it's gone again. Let's talk a little bit more about this issue of headaches and hormones. Are you talking more about women than men? Oh yeah, of course men have, have migraines also um, and of course men have hormonal difficulties the same. The difference is that women have a, a big cycle, hormonal cycle on a monthly basis and so they see their issues a little bit clearer with the hormones. Men tends to be affected by food or fatigue more. So yeah, there is a little difference but yes, not, not so much more women. But women tend to have the, the migraine problem a little bit more than men because they have a fluctuating hormone system, much, much more fluctuating than men. So a lot of women do report that they get headaches and some get migraines just before the start of their cycle. And some of them take a Panadol and it goes away and others of them have 24 hours of, of a pretty bad time of it and um, the next day they've recovered but they're pale 
and tired and you can see it in their eyes that they've had a, a rough time of it. What's going on for these women? Sometimes it's very simple where because of the change on a monthly basis, they tend to have sweet cravings and eat things like chocolate or something similar, have a little bit of ice cream. And as soon as we target that and substitute those kinds of indulgences with supportive food, things like cooked fruit or something similar that, that works for them, and they find that it's not so much as a, a problem. In other words, if we don't have very strong chemicals, like lots of chocolate and ice cream as a, a support for ourselves when our hormones change, then we don't have the headaches. On the other hand, there are people who don't have those circumstances and it is purely just hormonal. And the only answer for them is to get their lower back strong, get their estrogen levels up a little bit so that things are softer and more calm, not so much pressure. And certainly the first thing is to take away foods that are making them feel very, very heavy and hot and get them into a, a more comfortable eating patterns. Heavy and hot foods being too much cheese and red meat and, and that's the pressure build up that precedes uh, their menstrual cycle then just disappears and they don't have that build up of pressure inside their belly and consequently inside their heads. Can you see within their posture of these types of women that there are things going on or would you look more at diet factors? It's part of it. I mean, we're using food to help because if you don't feed a problem, it, it doesn't have support. It's not the complete answer because when it comes to migraines, it needs a little bit more than that. It needs a rebalancing of the hips. It needs a rebalancing of the pelvic floor, which connects to the, to the lower back so that those internal muscles are all stable and balanced. So we need to open one hip more or close one hip more. We need to tighten lower back on one side more or relax the other side more. It needs a balancing function. We need to see where the imbalance is and target those functions and stabilize the lower body. It's, it's okay to change the diet and it, it usually is enough but might not be because it is actually a structural thing. If the person's young enough, they'll just adapt easily. But where it's entrenched a little bit, then we need some therapeutic structural realignment where the person learns how to hold themselves and balance those functions where they're standing and sitting in a more comfortable manner and it, it changes a lot of things in a person's life it makes them feel like they're inside their body and much more stable than their general behavior so it, it, it's a good path to to follow it's a good thing to to fix up you see it as a symptom and as a result of something else being wrong uh, not as something to be horrified by and go deeper and, and look at maybe using the symptom as a way of improving oneself overall. For women who have had headaches month in, month out, for years and years, starting from teenage years, they should not be disheartened by that and should look to some of the things that you're talking about and realise that there is a path forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a path forward. And I hope that I can put together a program for, for all of these people, whether it's women or men, but uh, certainly everyone suffering from chronic headaches, where we can address the deeper issues and you know, understand that the head is a very passive tool. It, it shouldn't have pressure in it. There shouldn't be any pressure in the eyes or in the teeth or in the tongue or is not in the brain. It's supposed to be soft, fluid and open. It's supposed to be working as a series of orify, the mouth light and relaxed, the nose open and receptive, the ears open and receptive, the eyes relaxed, open and receptive and also the brain. It's a, it's, it's a big antenna for taking in and there shouldn't be any pressure in there that stops the taking in. We, we need that function. We need the, the head to be working properly and uh, headaches are a sign that it's not working properly and, and that should be addressed and not just covered up. So I hope I can put a program together soon for everyone out there. But the first step is, is eating sensibly and it might be a struggle 
but looking for some way of balancing the left and right hip, trying to realign the spine and create some stability. But certainly the first steps are sitting with a stretched Achilles tendon and trying to breathe deeply and learn how to feel like you're holding yourself up. And anything that makes your neck and shoulders relax is is going to be of benefit. They're the two most severe types of, of headache and that can occur in men or women with different uh, catalysts. What about headaches that are a result of injury? It could be head injury or it could be injury to other parts of the body. We do see a lot of people who've had severe accidents, whether it's whiplash from a car, motorbike accidents or similar and it's all, a, like I said earlier, it's all a bit of a balancing trick. The, the head sitting up, modern engineers can't really figure out how the human body does it, how the human body manages to balance the head so nicely up on top of that very fragile thing. And it's all done with one big tendon at the base of the skull, which is all irrelevant really. But the thing is, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderfully sensitive, uh, delicate instrument to be able to stand and walk and run as we do. So uh, looking after it and being treating it gently and well is, is important. The headaches that people get from injury, it's a difficult thing to treat. But over time, if one builds up the big toe pressure, it might seem as if it's a, a big leap in understanding, but the, the center of gravity should be placed between your big toes as we stand and just squeezing your big toes down and putting some pressure on your big toes tends to relax the neck and shoulders. And we rehabilitate neck and shoulder problems by getting people to work on their, their structural balance. And you can, it's not so hard to do simple little exercises with one leg more than then the other and the center of gravity shifts back. When you get injured, the body reacts as a protection mechanism and a lot of muscles tighten up. There's a defensive mode. And if you've got an injury to the spine, neck, it's, it creates a very big reaction and things can go very bad. But we can slowly rebuild from the ground back up. And we look at the feet. We look at things like standing on one leg more than the other. We look at building the tone back into the big toe and squeezing those big toes into the ground, finding out which one's weak and doing some standing postures just a few seconds every morning and it makes a very big difference. In other words, what I'm saying is an overall is that it's all very delicate and what we need to do is not work the neck but rebalance the neck like a fine instrument and tightening it up from the, the legs all the way up. If you have an injury, the whole body goes out of whack and it's it's good to rebuild it from the ground up again and we do that by retensioning the knees and well, if, if that's the case and we're getting some relief which is wonderful but I mean we, we need a an overall cure we need the person to be able to be in charge of their problem and go deep enough to actually resolve the difficulty if you're treating the neck and the back and realigning the vertebrae and it keeps going out there's a deeper problem and that deeper cause needs to be addressed. So if it was an injury, your body responds dramatically to injury. It's not designed to have broken bones or severely strained tendons or ligaments. It, it's, it doesn't recover well from those sorts of things, especially if we keep going. As When we feel a little bit better, we get up and go back to work and start doing things again. And the body adapts with a lot of stress to these conditions. So the, the whole body needs to be addressed. You, you can't just realign the neck and the lower back and just treat the spine. We need to treat the whole body. Even in traditional osteopathy, the idea was um, to treat the whole body, all the muscles. But we need to look at the individual and really, really clearly see where the problem is coming from and treat the whole body, see what's really gone awry there. And by stressing the person a little bit, getting him to balance on one leg or balance on the other or try and do squats or see where the real difficulty is and and rebuild the person from the ground up again. And it's 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 quick and it's easy. It only takes a few weeks, even with really severe injuries, because the body wants to heal and it doesn't want to carry this tension around. 
as long as it's addressed in the correct manner and we target the real cause of the problem. So with any sort of injury, maybe one leg now is, is holding us up more than the other. And so the muscle builds more in that leg and the body will adapt to these injuries and allow us to keep going under stress. But it's good to, to go a little bit further and, and try and really balance the body out, find where the real cause is, be able to look a little bit deeper and address the problem according to that individual rather than treating the symptom. Disease. I'm talking about quite severe disease such as brain cancer. I'm wondering people who, who are really sick, do they get headaches and does this sort of thing apply to them what we're talking about headaches as far as i'm concerned i tell everyone this that it's a serious thing it shouldn't be treated as uh, something that's part of life no your brain hurts and and it could be the beginnings of something serious and cancer has been related to stagnation and some kind of congestion uh, if the blood's flowing if there's oxygenation if if there's not too much acid in the system you're going to feel okay but if you're having headaches uh, there's something serious and it needs to be treated. It needs to be dealt with. Maybe it is the beginnings of something, you know, growing in your brain. And it, it should be, even if it's not, it still should be treated as a very serious reaction. It, you don't want your brain hurting. It's, it's a bad, bad thing. Ha having a, a little pain in your foot or your hand or in your tummy, uh, I mean, yeah, okay, but your brain hurting, it's, it's serious. People who have got children, sometimes those children say, Mum, I've got a headache. It could be teenagers, it could be kids as young as 8, 9, 10. And a lot of parents seem to think that that is related to growing pains or hormonal shifts in a growing body. What's your view on that? I think it's serious. Something in their diet is wrong. Something in their body is, is not comfortable. It needs to be addressed. We should look very closely at lifestyle and, and um, what's happening with that person. And you'll see always that there's a, a, a deeper problem. There's something wrong. And it should be considered as a, a sign that things need to be cleaned up and the parent needs to take some drastic action, some responsibility, and start governing that child's life a little bit, look deeper. And, and you'll see that there's something not right in their health because in a couple of years you'll start to see that they're moody or uncomfortable or withdrawn. That's a, a condition that you, you should look at. It, a headache is a headache and it's a serious thing. It's not just part of life, even if you're a child. I think that's very succinct, very, very, very good point. So moving on to things like allergy-based headaches where people are diagnosed with an allergy and say okay well don't eat that type of food and then you won't get the headache. Can you talk about that with respect to balancing out nutrition? So just taking away a potentially offensive food is not necessarily going to fix the problem is it? Just taking things away is, is not the answer. We need to also support ourselves in the right way. As you know, and as our regular listeners know, that it's taking responsibility for yourself that is the key here. Which There's no simple, easy answers. There's great guidelines that, that we can provide, but one has to take some responsibility for their existence, and you can't just buy answers for your life. It's important that we start by understanding whole foods are the right, right way to live. Avoiding chemicals is the right way to live, um, not only for ourselves but for the planet. And the, the way that nature works is very, very simple and very obvious that it's the way it's meant to be. It's very simple. It's a very simple process. Refined foods are going to create problems and one needs to take responsibility for that. I mean, we... we in Rio Ho, we don't mind if you if you eat ice creams and cakes, but if you're having headaches and you're eating ice creams and cakes, really, you, you shouldn't be surprised. It's part of the package. If you're drinking alcohol, you are going to get overly happy and you are going to get grumpy and moody and you are going to go stupid and cause problems. And that's, that's the package and it, don't be surprised. You avoid the refined foods 
um, as a way of getting healthy and getting control and um, stability and normalcy back into your life. When it comes to things like headaches, see them as a serious issue. Stabilize your diet, but don't just take things away. What have you got left to eat? And well, what you have left to eat is is a massive range of foods. Now, maybe that's not lots of animal products and and packaged foods, um, but maybe you've had too much. So living on things like noodles and grains and beans and vegetables is boring, but it's it's where we need to go. Um, but you'll find that there's a whole massive variety of foods available to you. Many countries have different kinds of ideas about how to cook different kinds of foods. It changes with the seasons. It also changes with your tastes and your needs and your lifestyle. So adjusting your, your, your life to whole foods is adding good foods to your diet. And when you have headaches, it's nice to address the two main organs that cause headaches, which is the large intestine and the small intestine. And then if you give them lots of fiber, you're, you're, you're on the, the right first step. If it's if that doesn't work, just go deeper. And, and not only lots of fiber from grains, but also just live on root vegetables for a while and let that heal up and create some stability in there. Next time you have a headache, you'll know exactly what food caused that. And it might be something simple like fruit or tropical fruit or white bread. In a few months, maybe you can have white bread again and tropical fruit and you're okay. It's nice to just experiment on yourself and try and discover the truth of your particular needs. We're all different. We all like to live in the country we want to live in. We all like to live in the suburb we want to live in. We all believe we have the right to follow our dreams, individual needs, and be our unique selves. And part of that is also eating in a unique way and supporting ourselves in a unique way to make ourselves feel as if we're really supporting who we are and, and what we are. Eating like everyone else is just going to make you like everyone else, as we can see now. I really liked this concept that you talked about of, of acid in the brain that really creates a lot of headaches unnecessarily so and if you work backwards you can work out what foods are giving that acid can you tease that out a little bit more for us so how does acid get into the brain and how does it get out again and what sort of things do you recommend because I think a lot of people with a headache are, are told to drink more water. Well the body produces acid as a, a normal byproduct of living we can make it an abnormal byproduct of living by living too much. In other words, not going to sleep and eating tons of food and overworking and da 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 da. So we have too much acid build up and then we can have aches and pains. If we relax, have a sleep, eat more alkalizing foods, then the blood gets a little bit stronger and it washes the acid away. It's a, it's, it's a popular process now. Everyone's talking about this sort of thing, having balance in your diet. Everyone knows that that's the right thing to do. But when it comes to the head and the headache, what we have to understand is that the brain uses most of our sugar up. It's very, it's exhausting to, to use your brain a lot. It requires enormous amounts of energy to, to function. And it's a particular kind of energy and a particular kind of support. A lot of glucose, a lot of sugar goes, it gets used up in the brain. So we tend to eat foods to stimulate the brain if we're using the brain a lot. Things like coffee and things like sugar, fruit, uh, fruit juices, even wine these things go straight to the head. Different foods go to different parts of the body and create different kinds of acid buildup. So the, the foods that go to your feet accumulate and cause a problem called gout. And those sorts of foods are heavy animal products like red meat um, and pork, bacon. So giving up on sugar doesn't fix up gout. And then again, giving up on animal products doesn't fix headaches. So it's the different foods that cause the types of acid reactions in your head. And they can vary between things like fruit only because uh, once we've got headaches, then even fruit can be a problem, to alcohol. So it's the fructose to sucrose type range of foods. It's the foods that go up into your head and rise up and stimulate the brain. 
very sweet foods in other words, foods that accumulate in the brain and create this sort of acid buildup can be dealt with by having good strong blood and good blood flow. Foods that over acidic that accumulate in your brain with some poor posture, tension in the neck, then we're asking for problems. So certain foods accumulate in the head, certain foods accumulate as an acid buildup around the heart. Other people find that they have problems around the liver, maybe lungs. But when it comes to the head, there's certain foods that accumulate in there and they're usually those very, very sweet ones and usually some chemical-based food is the real cause. Something like alcohol or sugar is usually the main culprit when it comes to headaches. That's fairly profound. People with different degrees of headaches from cluster through to headaches that appear from time to time can really look at their diet and their posture and try and understand what's going on for them and then take some new different action to to solve their issues. Taking some alkaline food like putting good quality sea salt in their cooking and other people maybe just a raw food diet. It really depends on your condition, who you are, where you're living, your history, your age. It varies but generalization I can make is that Another chemical is not the answer and finding what suits you is the first right step. The first right step is to go for whole foods and whether it's anything from salads to whole grains and then your body can feel what's going on and you can then judge what's working for you and what's not. It's very hard for us to tell when we've had too many vitamin C capsules. We don't know until our teeth start falling out and then we can make an intellectual assessment. But if you're eating oranges, you know when you've had too many, you can feel it. So going with whole foods is the, is the right way to go. Going on chemicals and pills, it, it we can't be in charge. Um, we don't know what's happening on a day-to-day basis. It's it's not going to be productive in, in a learning process for ourselves to figure out what suits us and what doesn't. But whole foods we can relate to a little bit and we can simplify it. And it's a, it's a lovely, exciting journey. It just know that you have to take responsibility for your own health because it's a subtle thing. It, it's not just your body, it's your feelings and your ideas. So if you take responsibility, then you can refine this process down to support yourself, what really makes you dynamic and unique in the world. This has been a very broad ranging conversation, but I have another question and that is, why do pregnant women get headaches? Women when they get pregnant, have a unique set of circumstances where they get nausea, maybe headaches, and it's not uncommon. They have backaches and all sorts of cravings. My understanding is very simple. You shouldn't have any of those things. It, it is part of the process of cleansing. What's happening is that your body is trying to adjust. It's trying to prepare itself for the next stage, for the next part of the pregnancy process. So it, it is a cleansing process. You can't do radical changes in diet when, when you're pregnant. You, you, you don't want to make anything drastic. But the best advice I can give to pregnant women is keep doing what you're doing. Try and avoid chemicals as best you can, but follow your feelings, whatever suits you. And be active. It's normal and we're programmed for, and it is part of our existence as human beings to understand that we, we are half animal and you, you, you have a lot of energy when you're pregnant. It's a, it's a common thing that women all want to move house when they're pregnant sort of like third month, fourth month, they have to move. Somehow it all ends up where you're building a nest and it's okay to be very dynamic and move a lot and do things and do exercise. A lovely doctor once said to me who's specialized in, in, in dealing with these types of issues where he's dealing with sick sick pregnant women and they all ask the same thing, which is, you know, is it all right to exercise? And he said, oh, it was actually she. And she said, if doing exercise was part of miscarrying or cause problems, there'd be a lot of young girls moving furniture around. And it's it's true. It's not the cause of problems being active. Being active and, and maintaining muscle tone is a really good idea when you're pregnant. And if you're having headaches, it's not a bad thing to go for a walk, burn that acid off, and maybe think about the fact that, that, that your diet can be just maybe a little bit better, but it's very, very hard to, to make big changes when you're pregnant. But it's better to 
work towards getting very, very healthy before you get pregnant. I know that's not an option for a lot of people, but it, it's, it's a good idea to get healthy before you get pregnant. But if you are pregnant, you're having headaches, a, a walk is a good idea every morning. And some regular exercise, uh, there, are, there are lots of very safe, very, very good exercises that you can do to build your muscle tone for many, many reasons, which I'd, I'd love to do a podcast about. Yeah, I think that's an excellent suggestion. I hope that people with very severe headaches get to hear this podcast. I know I've got people in my circle, very close friends and close family members who have got massive headache issues and they have just given up and think that that's going to be their life for the rest of their lives and I really hope they get to listen to this. It's not easy. None of, none of these things are easy, but it's exciting and it's wonderful. Everything that is wonderful and, and, and fantastic for human beings is a slow learning process. They're, they're all the things like relationships and work and learning to walk and learning to speak, all of these things are a slow learning process. And you just start and it, it, it unfolds. And there's, there's some level of difficulty, but that's, that's the great reward for tackling something that is important. Try to clean up your diet a little bit by just starting on whole foods. Don't throw things away. Add good food into your diet. And that's maybe not going to solve your problems and probably won't if you have very bad headaches. But trying to find something that balances your hips a little bit and recognize that maybe you have some twists there from the other things I was saying earlier and combining those two, you're not going to lose. Thank you, Andre, for that very valuable discussion on headaches. And I hope that this gives new insights and a new path forward for people who have headaches of all types. Thank you very much. Any listeners who would like to learn more about Andre's work or Rioho can connect and follow on Instagram and LinkedIn using the address of Rioho Wellness. We spell Rioho R-Y-O-H-O and then add wellness on the end, obviously. Episode notes will be loaded up and available at riohowellness.com, which is the master website. And just a few more things before you take off. Number one, do you have a health issue or question you would like explored in one of our podcasts? Please submit it to us at the website where there is a contact page, riohowellness.com website. Number two, would you enjoy being notified by very short email every time we do something on Rioho Wellness? This includes notification of our up and coming wellness podcasts and other things towards our tipping point. If you want to receive that, go to riohowellness.com and drop in your email address and you'll get the very next one. And we hope you really enjoy it. Thanks everyone for listening and thank you, Andre, for another fantastic episode. See you next time. 